Number one. This happened about two years into our almost nine year relationship and it still gives me the chills when I think about it. My partner Ron and I had just pulled up to his mom's house after a date night and we were in the middle of saying our goodbyes. For context, his mom's house used to be in a quiet residential area surrounded by busy main streets and a random freeway entrance two blocks over. We were not parked for more than five minutes when a man coming from the house next door came up to the car with a flashlight, tapping on the passenger window motioning for us to lower it. Well, needless to say, we were both a little freaked out as he appeared out of nowhere and we refused to lower the window, especially considering we did not recognize him. He tapped harder, and this time, Ron told me to just drive around the block until he went away. So, I drove down to the end of the street to put some distance between us and the man. That's when we see him jump into a car and drive full speed towards us. Panicked, I make a wide right turn onto the main street so that I am in the left lane. Does the dude not do the same except pull into the lane on our left in the middle of oncoming traffic? At this point, I am hysterical and Ron and I are trying to rationalize what is happening. When I catch a glimpse of his face, he seemed so angry and I realized he's screaming something at us, but I can't make it out. So I make an asshole maneuver in front of the car on my right to dart down the next residential street. We thought we lost him, but he came flying down behind us, only to pull up on our left again, screaming at us to get out of the car. While this is happening, Ron has the police on the phone, trying to give him details about the car and the man driving. I, on the other hand, step hard on the brake and reversed it all the way down the block to get away from the man. He must have not seen it coming because he seemed to stall for a minute. We were hoping that this was the end, but he chased us down the street too. I realized the freeway entrance is only a block over now, so I hightail it, running a red light in the process, and pull onto the freeway at the last minute. In the rear view, we see him stop abruptly and stare at us while we zoomed down the freeway. With the police on the phone, they explain that they'll send out a patrol to scoop out the area for the car, that of the description. Not sure that ever happened though. I drive until I was sure he wasn't following us and we were far enough and away from Ron's mom's house to call my parents. We pulled into a Rite Aid parking lot and waited for them to come get us while I was crying hysterically. That night, my stepdad drove Ron back to his mom's house, where they saw no sign of the man. The next day, when Ron had told his family what happened, they went next door to confront the neighbor about it, only for the neighbor to explain that they had no company over that night. They did not recognize the car and didn't know anyone of that description. Number two. A little about me. I'm a personal trainer and I share a space in an office that also has an acupuncturist and a chiropractor. Usually they operate during the day and I will go around 7 to 8 p.m. at night to work out and do heavy lifting so their clients don't have to hear metal clinking or banging in another room. As a preface, once in a while, the door will unlock and a cleaning person will come in. The door will chime and they will clean and leave. The family that cleans the building is Hispanic, usually a taller man who is very nice, will clean our office and a woman who I assume is his wife will walk around with a trash bag and pick up the other buildings in the area. Tonight was the usual routine, go to the office, drop off some paperwork, and squeeze in an evening workout. I'm putting away some stuff and printing off a few things, and I hear the door unlock. 
The door is older, and it makes a very distinct clink sound when the key turns in it. The door chimes, and a man comes in, asking me in Spanish if he can come in. I don't speak Spanish, and he repeats it in English. Can I come inside? Of course. I think it's one of the members of the family to come clean, and I say yes. It isn't until ten minutes later, after I go to throw away something, I noticed the trash is still there, and this man is just sitting in front of the door. I didn't want to be rude, but I didn't understand why, on a Sunday night at 8.30 p.m., this guy is just sitting here in the office alone with me. I text the chiropractor and tell her what's going on, to which she calls me immediately and says, You need to leave. There is a button on the alarm to notify the police. Do you want me to come over? I tell her yes, and I grab my stuff and approach the man. I tell him, I'm leaving for the night and turning on the alarm, so you need to leave. He looks at me and shakes his head and says no very firmly. I freeze up, thankful that I still have someone on the phone, and I say, why are you here? He mumbles something along the lines of, I am on probation. I tell him that the office isn't for probation, and in my mind, I am thinking why would someone be reporting to an officer at 8.30 p.m. on a Sunday? The office is holistic. We have Buddhas and incense around. It says Oriental Medicine on the door, and he stands up and blocks the door. He starts asking what the office really is, and I tell him it's for an acupuncturist and other specialties. As I type this, I wonder why he cared to know. It wasn't for probation. Why would he care so much to know what the office was? I wonder if I made a mistake in telling him. He then pulls out his phone and begins to scroll through it. He says he doesn't know the address and maybe I can help him, suggesting I walk over to peer at his phone. I tell him I can't help him and he needs to leave. He scrolls for five minutes on his phone and at this point I'm hoping the Cairo will get here soon. He holds his phone up at me and shows me a random list of 20 to 30 addresses. I tell him, maybe what you're looking for is across the street, but not here. You need to leave. He seems hesitant to leave, but finally turns around and walks out slowly. As soon as he gets outside, I lock the door. I guess it didn't matter because this man somehow had a key and got in, but I locked that door as soon as I could. It was only then that I noticed there was a van parked in front of my car outside. This man gets in the passenger side, so he isn't alone, and I decide to wait until the car leaves before I get in my own car. The way they parked, it would only take them backing up five feet to box me into the space. The van is huge with suicide doors on the back, and it proceeds to wait for 15 minutes before slowly pulling out. It stops in front of the office, as if they're taking one last look at the building, and slowly pulls off. I wait, and I notice that they have only pulled up 50 feet just out of my sight. They are still there, and I can barely see the headlights. It's like they're waiting for something. Thankfully, the chiropractor pulled up in her car, and in time, and the van was gone. The whole experience was unreal. I can't seem to wrap my head around it. The fact that this man came in with a key and acted like he was there for probation doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. The fact he wanted to know what the office really was and he blocked the door is also bizarre. A few weeks ago when I was moving equipment into the space, I felt like I was being watched, and I ended up burning some sage and thought maybe I was just paranoid about being in a new space at night. But now, I'm wondering if there was something I wasn't picking up on and didn't know it yet. I will keep this updated as things progress, and hopefully, 
the man doesn't come back in, and hopefully we get a security camera installed and the locks changed. Hi, first of all, I just wanted to say English is my second language, so please forgive me if I make any mistakes. As a backstory, I'm from Malaysia, and this story happened in one of the international airports there. I came from East Malaysia, and I was a student at one of the local university in Peninsular Malaysia. You can travel there by land because the Peninsular and East Malaysia is separated by the South China Sea. So, of course, the fastest way to get there is by flight. And for some reason, I really like taking the last flight of the night to get to my destination. I usually travel alone, and I mostly keep to myself as I am an introvert and don't really like talking to strangers. Before that night, I haven't really encountered any problems with weird people as the airport tended to be busy and I always stayed in an area filled with other people minding their own businesses and in flight. I would just read or listen to some music and I also tend to just ignore the person sitting next to me. One night, my flight was unfortunately delayed and we were supposed to reach our destination close to midnight, but with the delay, we would reach the airport close to 2 a.m. I remember being frustrated because I know it will be hard to get an Uber late that night. I sighed and then just decided that I would spend the night at the airport and grab an Uber the next morning to my university. No big deal, I thought. People do this all the time, I thought. So I relaxed into my seat. I forgot to mention that during the flight, I was supposed to seat in the middle, but when everyone was seated, I noticed that the aisle seat was empty, so I moved there. This was when I noticed the guy sitting on the window seat. He was acting strange. He kept looking at me and was trying to get my attention, but I ignored him with all my might because I was just tired and don't really want to have a conversation with a stranger. I closed my eyes and pretended to sleep. I remember it was really cold inside and was thinking about just turning off the AC on top of my seat but didn't really want to move because then the guy would know I'm awake and I would be forced to engage in a conversation with him. It was a two and a half hours flight after all and I don't want to have a conversation during the flight. Then suddenly I feel a whole lot colder than before and I opened my eyes just a little to figure out what was going on. Then I saw the guy actually adjusting both the AC from the top of his seat and also the AC from the middle seat to face me. I got very annoyed, but I'm not actually someone who likes to confront people for anything. So I just sucked it up and closed my eyes, even though I was now shivering, and just sort of hugged myself and continued to ignore this guy. I honestly don't know what the guy was thinking doing that to me. I thought he was done by doing whatever he was doing and wouldn't bother me anymore after that, right? After all, I didn't respond to whatever the heck he was doing, even though I am suffering in silence now from the cold. However, when the air hostess started to distribute the prepared meals to the passengers, and he noticed that I didn't have a meal when he got his, he suddenly tapped my shoulder and I just tensed up and looked at him in alarm because I really don't like being touched by people due to some childhood trauma. But this guy doesn't seem to notice my reaction to him and just smiled at me. Hey, I noticed that you don't have a meal. Aren't you hungry? You know what? You can have my meal, he said. And I was just looking at him before saying, No, it's okay, <laughs> and smiled uncomfortably. But he insisted and even got me to lower my table and forcing me to accept his meal. Then he ordered another meal for himself and started telling me that he can't eat alone after seeing me. 
He said that he felt sorry for me and that it was his nature to help people. And then he just watched me eating with his meal with a big grin on his face. He didn't even touch his meal after I was done. Now, if the meal wasn't prepared by the airline and it was still sealed, I would have definitely think he would put something in the meal. But then I thought, maybe I was just being paranoid. Maybe he really was just trying to help me. I felt extremely uncomfortable and he was being a little forceful. He even moved to middle seat to be closer to me. He then asked me what my name was and told me his name was Sam and that he worked somewhere in the peninsula. I just nodded and then he asked me where I was from and why I was going to the peninsula. I gave him a short but honest answer just to be polite. When I told him I was a student at one of the local university there, he then asked me how I was going to get to my university at this hour and I stupidly said, Oh, I'm just going to spend the night at the airport. I'm used to it. What? No, that's too dangerous for a girl as pretty as you, he said before continuing. You know what? My brother has a place not far from the airport. Why don't you stay with me? Oh, don't worry. My sister-in-law is there, so you wouldn't be alone. Don't worry. I'm a good person, he said, still with a big grin on his face. I immediately became afraid and quickly said no while shaking my head. There will be a lot of people at the airport and I'm used to it. I said that, but he ignored me and began to chatter happily not caring whether I answered him or not. At one point, he even asked me if I was single and asked for my phone number and I just gave it to him, but was planning to block his number if ever he tried to contact me or something. He even made a few comments about my looks and how he found me so cute and that I looked so lost, so he just had to say something to me. At this point, I began thinking about my options. For some reason, I didn't think about approaching one of the air hostesses for help because technically, he hadn't done anything wrong to me, but I felt scared anyhow. I decided that I would get out as fast as I can as soon as we landed and ditch this guy, you know, just to be safe. And I don't know, maybe I'm just being an idiot, but I had several encounters with creepy people before that it was so bad that my friend's cousin called me a weirdo magnet due to my naivety. So no, I'm not taking any chances. After all, I was a first year student and had just started university and I didn't have anyone that I can really call my friends yet. So yeah, I'm on my own. So back to the story, the plane landed and I tried to get out as fast as I can, but I have a hand carry luggage and it was slowing me down. Sam was standing behind me the whole time and once we got on the ground, he actually held my hand as if it was the most natural thing to do. I froze. I was really scared and I honestly didn't know what to do. I absolutely hated it when people touched me. My family never hugged me and my very few friends knew that I hated being touched unless I tell them it's okay to touch me. And this stranger just hold my hand without saying anything. I know I should do something, maybe scream for help, but I just stood there and froze and like an idiot that I am, I just followed the stranger. Then we walked past the toilet and I suddenly got an idea. I told Sam I needed to go to the toilet. At first he said no time because his brother is here and we needed to hurry up. But I insisted on going and I said I really, really have to pee. And I wasn't lying either, so he sighed and said okay. I got hopeful, maybe I can escape from this guy. So I started to drag my stupid luggage to the toilet, but this guy stopped me and told me he can look after my luggage for me. I said no thanks, but he just grabbed my luggage from my hand and told me to hurry up. So I walked to the toilet and stayed there for a bit, panicking. I thought about ditching my luggage and try to escape without it, but then I remembered that my laptop was inside that luggage and it has all my important documents that I needed for my study. I tried to call somebody, but my phone was dead. 
I started to tear up a bit and decided to just ditch my stupid luggage and run away somehow. But I must have taken too much time in the toilet because then I heard someone enter the toilet and call my name. Yeah, it was Sam. My heart dropped. I slowly got out of the toilet, fully convinced that this was it for me. I'm doomed. Now, you would think that I could ask for someone's help or just approach one of the staff for help. I know I should, but as soon as he touched me, my skin crawled and I just got really scared again. And since it was already very late and we were really the last flight to arrive that night, there were very few staffs around and those that were working. They were engaged in something else or were surrounded by other passengers probably asking for help about accommodation for the night or something. And I just watched them helplessly, hoping someone might notice my distress, but everyone just ignored me. While walking towards his brother's car, he told me to tell his brother that I'm his girlfriend and that to just stay quiet and he'll do all the talking. Then I thought, maybe I could ask his brother for help and just send me to my university instead of going to wherever this guy is planning to take me. But then I started thinking that what if his brother doesn't believe me? I mean, between family and stranger, who would you believe, right? Plus, maybe I am being stupid and Sam was just really helping me even though he was forceful and wouldn't let go of me. Maybe he was just overly nice? Seeing no other choice, I sadly got into the car with them. Now, I'm not good with cars, but I remember the car I got into with these strangers. It was a black double cabin Hilux, but I didn't see the plate number. So we drove for about an hour and all this time I was scared and this guy wouldn't let my hand go. I noticed the brother kept looking at me through the mirror and I was even more scared and uncomfortable. Then they brought me to this condo. I was hoping that there was really a sister-in-law and that all of this was just a huge stupid misunderstanding. But then his brother told me that his wife is not home and that she was visiting some family member and will only be back tomorrow. I don't know what to think about anymore. So Sam told me I can stay in his room and that tomorrow morning he'd take me back to my university. I didn't really want to go to his room, but I don't really want to stay in the living room with two men that I don't know. He showed me his room and then handed me my luggage back and I just locked the door. So I just sit in his bed looking at the door. My heart was pounding like mad and for a while nothing happened. Then I heard a knock on the door. I try to be quiet because maybe whoever it was will leave me alone thinking I had gone to sleep. It's Sam. Are you awake? He said in a quiet voice. I just needed to talk to you for a bit. When I didn't say anything, I heard the doorknob was being turned, but I locked it so he can't get in. Then it was quiet again for a bit, until I heard the jingle of a key, and my heart dropped when I realized he had a key and was trying to get inside. I heard Lee told him to wait and I opened the door, just a bit. Sam was there smiling at me again. Oh, I thought you were sleeping. Why did you lock the door? He asked. What do you want? I'm tired. I just really want to rest. I told him and I tried to shut the door, but he pushed the door and prevented me from shutting the door properly. Sam, please leave me alone for now. I'm really tired. I told him, but he wouldn't budge. Hey, what's wrong? I'm really a good person. You have nothing to fear from me. You can trust me. He said, at this point, I got another idea. Oh yeah? Prove it. Give me your IC. That's our Malaysian identification card. I said that, and to my surprise, he said okay. He really did give me his IC. See, I'm not lying to you, he told me. So yeah, I got his card and saw that his name really was Sam. But that doesn't mean anything. The card seems legit, but he is still a stranger to me. Long story short, he got inside the room and locked the door behind him. So it was just him and me, 
Trapped inside the room, he tried to have a conversation with me and tried to get me to sit down with him on the bed. But as soon as he tried to get close to me, I just stood up, tried to get to the door, in which point he had proceeded to grab my hand and tried to get away from him and I finally screamed and told him to go away. I don't remember much about what happened next, but the next thing I know, I heard his brother's voice calling for us and asking what happened and he was banging on the door. Now I was crying hysterically and struggled to open the door while Sam just sat on his bed looking at me, seemingly stunned as if he didn't do anything wrong. I finally managed to get the door open and at that point, I was sobbing and told his brother I wanted to leave now and that I didn't want to be there anymore. Somehow, I convinced his brother to drive me to my university. Of course, the gate was locked and the security guard there told me that I had to walk to my door because he can't let any car inside after midnight. And I just said it was fine and walked the rest of my way. But I didn't care. I didn't want his brother to find out where I stayed for fear that they might come back and search for me. I was exhausted. I remember telling my friends back home about what happened the next day after getting some much needed rest and they dismissed it and saying that I was being dramatic and it was actually romantic. Yeah, they actually think it was romantic and I missed a good opportunity to find a boyfriend and I was like, what the heck, which part was romantic? The part where he practically dragged me to come with him even though I repeatedly said no? Or the part where he locked me in his room with him? What the actual fuck? Oh, I still had his IC, but kind of forgot I had it with me until I arrived at my room and kind of just lost it and cried silently. And I realized I was still holding his damn IC and I cried harder waking up my roommates. I didn't know them but they kind of helped me and I told them bits and pieces of what happened to me and honestly I just wanted to sleep and forget anything that ever happened. For a week I lived in terror and I refused to get out of the dorm in fear that Sam and his brother might come back. Sam did text me and called me a few times asking about his IC and asked me to hang out with him and his brother again as if nothing happened and everything was fucking fine. And then he told me he went to my university looking for me and I freaked out. I asked my roommates to drop his card with a security guard and told Sam to just pick it up there, but he never came. I blocked his number after that and I ended up dropping out of university a few weeks later, but for a different reason unrelated to this story. And I moved back with my family in East Malaysia. Now, I don't know if I'm actually being overly dramatic about what happened that night, and I don't really care if anyone believed me, but it felt good to finally let this off my chest. And I don't really know what would have happened that night if I didn't scream and convince this brother to send me back to university. But Sam, the supposedly good guy, let's never meet again, ever. Hi everybody, it's your creepy older sister here. Thank you so much for listening. You have no idea how I appreciate this. Since the channel is fairly new though, I would like to hear some comments or suggestions from you so that I can continuously improve my coming videos. If you want to know what the name of the channel means, you can check out the description below. If you want to send me stories to read, you can also check out my email and send it there. It's also in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so we can grow together here. And I'll definitely try my best to upload more each week. Once again, thank you very, very much. And to all the creepy experiences, bad vibes, scary people, in paranormal encounters. Together we say to them, Tabi Tabi Po.